Okay, today we're going to continue in the cost of capital. We talked about the uh, comparison between loan terms, talked about uh, the importance of liquidity, but also the importance of finding the least cost loan. And to help us choose the least cost loan, we talked about the vocabulary, the actuarial rate, the annual percentage rate, and the effective interest rate. And we dedicated that lecture in learning how to calculate those particular rates. And then today we're going to show how to use those specifically in comparing between different loan terms. We also culminated that lecture in talking about how to calculate or compute interest. We didn't spend a lot of time on the add-on or discount methods, although it's in your textbook and you're encouraged to read through that but we focused on the remaining balance method as we learned is what exactly the technique that we were using when we fully amortized a loan and when we were doing the amortization a schedule which is commonly used now however there was a day before lenders were required to report the annual percentage rate that some of these add-ons and discounts were used because they could claim or advertise a three percent interest rate when in fact the true interest rate was 21%. And that's when the Congress looked at that and said, hmm, maybe we better have them report the annual percentage rate so people know what they're looking at. Today we're going to use this vocabulary and this procedure to compare four different loan alternatives, one with quarterly payments, one with annual payments. We're going to introduce some new concepts through this process as well. We're going to talk about equal principal payments instead of fully amortized loans. And we're going to also introduce getting a loan from a farm credit system, which then we have to learn about the purchase of stock in that cooperative. And we're also going to introduce fee requirements. There's some subtle things that we're going to learn about as we go through these loan comparisons. Your reading assignment is chapter 14. The focus of this lecture is the comparison between alternative loan terms. The problem that we're facing, we're looking at borrowing $100 for a two-year loan. So it's a small amount, short time horizon. It's easy to put on the screen, but we could easily have made this a $10,000 loan over 15 years. Just means that there'd be more entries in the arithmetic, but the procedure is the same. We're going to look at four different banks that lend money, or it could be one bank with four different loan terms, but we're actually going to define it as four different banks. The first bank A is fully amortized quarterly payments. The second is the same, but it's annual payments. The third bank is going to require equal principal payments, and the fourth bank is actually a production credit association which does fully amortized loans, but requires a stock purchase, and they require a fee. And what we're going to do is choose the uh, least cost loan. Then we will then talk about the liquidity aspects. Okay, so we're going to compare these different loans, and uh, we've created this information into a chart. Whereas we're looking at the banks, Bank A, B, C, and the PCA, and down we have information you see that the loan amount is the same. Notice there's a difference in contractual rate. The lowest interest rate you can see is offered by the Production Credit Association. The next is Bank A. And then after that, we have Bank B and C. Now, if you're just looking at the contractual rate, that was our criteria. Who would you borrow the money from? The PCA is at 10%. Looks like it's a lot better rate. But that's not our criteria. We have to go down and look at the actuarial, the APR, and the effective rate. The conversion period is one for all of them, but bank A, which is quarterly. Notice that the life of the loan is the same for all of them. And three of them have the standard fully amortized loan. Only one, the third bank, has equal principal method of computing the payments. Only the PCA has a fee. Only the PCA has a stock requirement or compensating balance requirements. And then what we're going to do is to determine which of these is better. We're going to calculate the actuarial, then the APR, and then the effective rate. And we have to calculate the effective rate. Why? Because one of these banks 
has a different conversion periods per year than the other three banks. So the APR might give you the wrong answer. Okay, the steps. You're going to lay out the cash flows associated with each loan. Then you're going to calculate the actuarial rate, which if you recall is just simply the yield on that loan, and you all know how to calculate yield. Then we're going to calculate the APR, which is just a simple multiplication. And then we're going to plug that information into the formula to calculate the effective rate. We're going to focus each bank individually, and at the end we'll have our comparison chart. Looking at Bank A, we've already went through the details on this one. And the big thing is, is that the conversion periods are four, which means that there's four payments per year. So we are talking about quarterly payments over this two-year period of time. It's fully amortized. No fee, no stock requirements, no compensating balances, no non-interest costs associated with this. The first thing we're going to do is to calculate the loan payment. And since it's fully amortized, you all know how to do this. It's a $100 loan. It's a quarterly payment, so if the annual contractual rate is 12%, how do you get the quarterly rate? You take the 12% and divide it by 4, okay, which gives you the 3% rate. And how do you get the uh, periods? There's two years. Multiply it by 4, which gives us 8 periods. So nothing complicated here. It's something you've all done. It's uniform series and we calculate the A. That's simple to do, right? You put 8N, 3% I, $100 as your present value, zero out the future value, compute payment, and it comes to be $14.25 every three months or quarterly. So if we lay this out again in a chart to handle the uh, debt, this chart, we have the timeline across the top, right? And then we look at the components. This first component is the principal. We're borrowing $100 today. That's cash to the business of $100. The payment, which we calculated here below, is uniform. And we're going to make eight payments of $14.25 every three months. And notice for the fee and the stock, since we assume those to be zero, then they show up as zero. So the chart in this particular case is quite easy because we have a positive $100 inflow into the business today from the lender, and in return we have to pay eight payments of $14.25. With this information, we need now to calculate the interest rates, and we're going to calculate the actuarial rate. And what's the yield? What is the definition of yield? The IRR which is the rate that makes the present value of cash inflows equal to the present value of cash outflows. What is the present value of cash inflows? It's the $100 today. No discounting because we get that from the bank today. What is the present value of the cash outflows? We're making that $14.25 payment over the two years in quarterly payments. So we have this eight payments and we're trying to find the rate that makes those equal. And what's the rate that makes those equal? Look at this equation. And let's go back in the slides. What's the rate that makes that equal? 3%. So what is the APR? Calculate the APR. You take that quarterly rate and do what with it? Okay, you're going to multiply the actuarial rate, or yield, times 4, which is the conversion period. Okay, since this is a quarterly rate, then every three months, Okay, the interest becomes part of the principal. So in the end, what's our APR? 12%, which happens to be the uh, same okay, as the contractual rate. Because this is quarterly payments, we want to convert this to an effective rate, not just the APR. And we plug that into our formula, which is, if you recall, is 1 plus the APR divided by the conversion periods, all raised to the number of conversion periods, minus 1. We plug that in and it comes out to 12.6%. So the effective rate or the true interest rate on this loan isn't 12% as stated because you're having to pay interest on the interest. It's actually 12.6%. So you can see on our chart okay, that we put our actual rate, APR, and effective rate. And now we're going to bank B. 
And bank B is simpler because the conversion period is one, meaning that it's annual payments. We're only going to make two payments. Okay, looking at bank B, we see that, again, we're borrowing $100. In this case, if you look back at the data chart, this bank is charging 12.5%, but it's annual payment, so there's only two payments. Plug that into our calculator, and the payment is two payments of $59.56. We look at our table. The principal is $100. In this case, there's only two payments because they're annual of $59.56. If we look at our net cash flows, we can see that we receive $100 today, and then we pay $59.56. In the next chart, we're going to look at how to calculate the actuarial rate. And remember, we're trying to find the rate that makes the present value of the uh, cash inflows equal to the present value of the cash outflows. Okay, we first calculate the actuarial rate. Again, as you can see, as I pointed out on the previous slide, we're trying to find the rate that makes the present value of the cash inflows equal to the present value of the cash outflows. There's two payments of $59.56. And if you look at that previous slide, you already know what the answer is. Compare this equation with the equation at the bottom of the previous slide, and what is the answer? 12.5. So in this case, the actual rate is 12.5%. So to calculate the APR, we take the actual rate times the number of conversion periods. Since this is annual, the conversion period is one. So we see that the actual rate and the APR are the same, which is always going to be the case when you're dealing with the annual payments. To calculate the effective rate, the APR divided by one is still the APR. So it's one plus the APR minus one. So you see then that in this particular case where you're having a fully amortized loan with annual payments, the actual rate is the same as the contractual rate, which is the same as the uh, APR, which is the same as the effective interest rate. So we've now completed the information for bank A and bank B, and these were the easiest ones. And as we compare bank A and bank B, if you compare the contractual rate, which one has the lowest rate? If you were looking at the APR from bank A and bank B, which would you choose? A. But having taken Ag Eco 330 and understand the higher levels of finance, and you calculate the effective rate so that you properly make comparisons where one is quarterly payments and one is annual payments, which do you choose? Does that tell you something? You can't use the APR to compare loans if they have different conversion periods even though your congressman says it's okay. There's another level that you have to look at.